<laughs> What's up painters and welcome to this second video of the miniature painting basic technique series. Here we are going to deal with a very important aspect and as happened with the illusions very necessary to understand and master when we start to paint, the brush strokes and how to move the brush. Its main premise is that the brush leaves more paint at the end of the brush stroke than at the beginning. The second factor is that we must always make the brush stroke in the same direction when we are working on the same area, to increase the effects of the first premise. Let's see now a simple theoretical scheme. The arrow indicates the direction in which the brush stroke is made, towards which the brush moves. This brush stroke is the representation of a 100% theoretical coverage, that is, a dense painting with perfect coverage. However, we will generally work with paint with a certain degree of dilution, greater or lesser, and which never really covers at 100%. If we add a series of brush strokes, orienting the end of each of them towards the same place, we observe how there the coverage is richer than the rest of the area. That is, with a single color or mix of paint, we are already creating a visible contrast. We can take advantage of this effect to create both light and shadow areas. Now, let's see this technique live. We will start with a simple and smooth surface, like this base. We can see the stroke of the brush, where each brush stroke begins and where ends, and where the greatest amount of paint is left. Also, the brush strokes are giving quickly, we can see how the same mover is repeated in each of them. Put the brush, move it in a more or less straight line, and leave it at the end of the movement. I'm going to skip a couple of layers later and move on to the last one I am given in this example. You can see that both the movement of the brush, the color and dilution of the paint, and the surface of the base on which I am working is exactly the same. With this, I want to say that, by repeating a process with the same elements, a visual sensation of a relatively worked area has already been created. In the picture, we see in more detail the contrast effect of a very clear paint with little coverage over a dark base. Now, we are going to see the same process, but completely from the beginning to the end, and in a more defined area, such as a piece of armor. The base color is a fairly dark brown, and I am going to highlight it with a bright orange, but quite diluted. Each of the number of steps of the top left represents a coat of paint, well diluted, to make the process easy to follow. The brush strokes cover almost the entire surface of the armor, starting from the area where I want it to be darker until finishing where I want to be more amount of orange. In each high level step, I always insist in moving the brush repeatedly towards the same part, and so the paint continues to more accumulate where I have chosen. While the paint is wet, it's very easy to move it with each brush stroke. In this step, also I continue with the same direction of the movement of the brush, it can be seen that I no longer cover the entire area of the armor, but only about a half. Also, we can see that this step is done in less time than the previous one, as the brush strokes are applied on less surface and since we already have a fairly well established contrast. At this stage, I have added a bit of yellow to the orange, to further enhance the brightness. The dilution is still high, which allows me to start the brush strokes again in a higher area compared to the last steps, thus making a smoother transition. This seventh step is to repeat the same previous one, to gain a bit more softness.
Here I have added a greater amount of yellow, two more highlight in the areas that I have chosen, which are the lateral ends of the armor and the lower edge, but always, always the brush moves in the same way. Now, in the second part, I will shade the armor with a very soft purple tone, with the paint even more diluted than in the highlight phase. In this shot, the autofocus of the camera played some tricks on the image, but it's easy to see which is the direction of the brush movement, just the opposite of the one made in the first phase. The image problem will be solved for the next shot. Now we can see more clearly how subtle the shading is, affecting little surface and moving the brush exactly as before. We continue shading, so that we now smooth the transition in the opposite area to the yellow of the maximum light. In the last step, we insist on concentrating the dark paint on the corners and top edge of the armor. Finally, we can see in the picture the smoothness and contrast obtained, without the brush strokes being perceptible. And so, we have come to the end of this video. Maybe it has been a bit repetitive about something like the basic movement of the brush, but 7 minutes are not so much time. As always, I hope you have enjoyed it and that you get the most out of it. Don't forget to like and share it and subscribe to the channel if you think it's worth it. Many greetings and see you in the next video, the mysterious dry brush. See ya!